Letitia Bader with Shalom TV's news update for Monday, December the 9th, 2013. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu addressed the issue of peace talks with the Palestinians at yesterday's Saban Forum in Washington, D.C., where he said via video link that the core of the conflict between the two parties is the persistent refusal by the Palestinians to accept the right of the Jewish people to national self-determination. He said the minimum requirement for peace was the Palestinian recognition of Israel as the home of the Jewish people with equal rights to self-determination as themselves. Netanyahu noted, though, that the best efforts to reach this peace deal with the Palestinians will come to nothing if Iran manages to achieve nuclear power. The prime minister cited the ongoing rhetoric from Iranian leaders calling for Israel's destruction which he said cannot be dismissed as just talk, and, add, and urged negotiators in Geneva to demand the Islamic Republic change its genocidal policy as part of final agreement talks with Iran. This is a regime committed to our destruction. And I believe there must be an unequivocal demand alongside the negotiations in Geneva for change in Iranian policy. This must be part and parcel of the negotiations. In other words, I'm saying that what is required is not merely a shift in a diminution of Iran's capability, an elimination of its capability to produce nuclear weapons, but also a demand to change its genocidal policy. That is the minimal thing that the international community must do when it's negotiating with Iran. Netanyahu also took the opportunity of the Saban address to praise the special bond between Israel and the United States, calling it the crucial anchor of stability in the Middle East. He said cooperation between the Obama administration regarding defense, security and intelligence has reached new heights, and that despite sometimes having differences of opinion because of different perspectives, on most issues, Netanyahu said, we see eye to eye. And he praised the open communication between himself and President Obama. He also praised Secretary of State John Kerry for his tireless work and dedication in efforts to reach a peace deal between Israel and the Palestinians. Palestinian official Yasser Abed Rabo criticized the recent suggestions made to the Palestinian Authority by Secretary of State Kerry regarding the peace negotiations. Abed Rabo, who participated in last week's meeting between Kerry and PA President Mahmoud Abbas, said the U.S. was asking the Palestinians to make security concessions in peace talks in order to silence Israel's criticism of the Iran deal. Abid Rabu told the Voice of Palestine radio that Kerry was looking to, quote, appease Israel through agreeing to its expansion demands in the Jordan Valley under the pro pretext of security. He said the U.S. agreement to Israel's security demands was aimed at silencing the Israelis over the deal with Iran and achieving a fake progress in the Palestinian-Israeli track at our expense. Meanwhile, U.S. Ambassador to Israel Don Shapiro said today that there was no connection between Israeli-Palestinian peace talks and the Iran issue. He told Israel's army radio these two issues concern both Israel's security and our security and the interests of all the Middle East, that it be a more quiet and stable region. But he added, we do not see any linkage in which we seek to give on one issue and receive on the other. Israel, Jordan and the Palestinian Authority are signing an agreement today to build a pipeline from the Red Sea to the Dead Sea, part of an initiative that would produce millions of cubic meters of drinking water for the region which desperately needs it. Israel's Minister for Regional Cooperation, Silvan Shalom, Jordanian Minister of Water and Irrigation, Hazem Nasser, and Palestinian Authority Minister for Water, Shadad Atili, were scheduled to convene at the World Bank in Washington today for an official signing ceremony. Shalom hailed the agreement in comments made to Israeli paper Yediot Haronot, saying, we're talking about a historic process that realizes a dream of many years. Further saying, we have here strategic cooperation of national significance between Israel, Jordan, and the Palestinian Authority. The Red Sea Dead Sea Canal is expected to cost between $250 and $400 million and will take about four to five years to complete. 
Israel's President Shimon Peres met today with the President of Guatemala in Israel. Otto Perez Molina was the first Guatemalan president to pay an official visit to the country. Both leaders during the welcome reception paid homage to Jorge Garcia Granados, who as Guatemala's ambassador to the UN had been named as a member of the UN Special Committee of Palestine in May of 1947. That committee was charged with investigating the conflict in Palestine and making recommendations to the UN General Assembly. Garcia Granados was strongly in favor of the partition of Palestine, and among the 11 member countries of the UN team was the most persuasive, a factor which helped ultimately pave the way for the creation of the State of Israel. Paris told Molina that Israel would never forget the debt that it owed to Guatemala and would be happy to operate with the country at every level. And staying with Paris, the Israeli president will not be attending the funeral of former South African leader Nelson Mandela as he had wished. Paris is recovering from a recent bout of the flu, and his medical team, as well as Israeli security officials, have ruled out the travel to South Africa. The Times of Israel reports that Knesset Speaker Yuli Edelstein or Justice Minister Sipi Livni will represent Israel at the funeral. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu was seriously considering going to the service in Johannesburg, but with the financial and logistic considerations of such a trip, it was decided that it was not possible. Mandela, who passed away Thursday at the age of 95, will be laid to rest in a state funeral and then burial at Kunu in the Eastern Cape Province, where he was born on Sunday, December the 15th. A German court has released accused Nazi war criminal Hans Lipschitz from custody after the former US as, rather, SS guard was diagnosed with dementia. As you may recall, Lipschitz, who is now 94, has been held in a prison hospital near Stuttgart since May on charges of being complicit in hundreds of murders at Auschwitz. He continued to maintain that he served only as a cook at the death camp. Lipschitz was born in Lithuania and reportedly moved to Chicago in 1956. He was stripped of his U.S. citizenship and deported in 1982 after U.S. immigration authorities determined that he had lied about his Nazi past. He was arrested in Germany last spring following the release of information to German courts on about 50 former Auschwitz guards. However, the arrest warrant against Lipschitz was dropped on Friday after a psychiatrist determined that he was suffering from the early stages of dementia and might not fully understand and respond to the charges brought against him. The Union for Reform Judaism kicks off its biennial this week in San Diego. Nearly 5,000 Jewish leaders will gather for the event, which also marks the Women of Reform Judaism's centennial. Both conventions take place December the 11th through the 15th at the San Diego Convention Center, bringing lay leaders and professionals together to learn, pray, share ideas, and make decisions about the future of Jewish life. URJ President Rabbi Rick Jacobs said some of the big ideas to be discussed at the biennial include the future of youth engagement in the reform movement, how to make the communities more accessible and welcoming, and looking at the challenges and opportunities facing the movement and congregations as a result of the findings of the recent Pew study. Jacob said this gathering of thousands of Jewish leaders marks the beginning of a dialogue that will move us forward in our work to reshape and reimagine Jewish life for our community in tremendous ways. For the first time, the conference will be open to participants who are not members of Reform congregations. Jacob said he wants visitors from outside the movement to experience the incredible vitality and depth and openness of Reform Judaism in the 21st century. And turning to our programming on Shalom TV for tonight, Monday, December the 9th, a new segment of the Wisdom of Dr. Ruth Westheimer is at 7. Then at 8, Executive Director of the American Jewish Committee, David Harris, describes how the AJC advocates on behalf of the Jewish people in communities around the world in an address he recently gave from Temple Israel in Ridgewood, New Jersey. And at 9 tonight, psychiatrist, author, and Rabbi Abraham Tversky joins Mark Golub on L'Chaim to discuss, among other things, his latest book, The Rabbi and the Nuns. 
That's tonight here on Shalom TV and ShalomTV.com. And that's Shalom TV's news update for Monday, December the 9th, 2013. I'm Tisha Bader.